classic posterior approach to shading nerve block. Draw a line connecting the greater trochanter and the posterior superior iliac spine. Now draw a 4 cm perpendicular line from the midpoint of this line. Now insert the needle perpendicular to the skin for approximately 5 cm. That was the short version of the posterior approach of sciatic nerve block. Now coming to the details of this block. The sciatic nerve exits the pelvis through the greater sciatic notch below the piriformis muscle, then descends between the greater trochanter of the femur and the ischial tuberosity. The nerve then runs along the posterior thigh to the lower third of the femur where it diverges into two large branches, the tibial and common peroneal nerves. The tibial and common peroneal elements of the sciatic nerve each have their own outer layer of epineurium. Both components are further enclosed by a dense layer of connective tissue which runs from the origin of the sciatic nerve to its bifurcation. This layer is known as paraneural sheet of the sciatic nerve. Injection of local anesthetic deep to this sheet but outside the epineurium of the tibial or common peroneal nerves has been shown to spread a considerable distance proximally and distally and result in a rapid onset dense block. This is not considered an intraneural injection as the injection occurs outside of the epineurium. Generally, 20 to 25 ml of local anesthetic is sufficient. Sciatic nerve block may cause patient discomfort because the needle passes through the gluteus muscles. Adequate sedation and analgesia are important to ensure patient comfort. Midazolam 2 to 4 mg can be given for patient positioning. And alfentanil 500 to 750 microgram is given just before needle insertion. Now, the posterior approach to sciatic block has wide clinical applicability for surgery and pain management of the lower extremity. It is particularly well suited for surgery on the knee, calf, Achilles tendon, ankle, and foot. It provides complete anesthesia of the leg below the knee with the exception of the medial strip of skin which is innervated by the saphenous nerve. When combined with a femoral nerve or lumbar plexus block, anesthesia of almost the entire leg can be achieved. Now, in order to perform this block, the patient is in the lateral decubitus position with a slight forward tilt. This prevents the sag of the soft tissues in the gluteal area and significantly facilitates block placement. The foot on the side to be blocked should be positioned over the dependent leg so that twitches of the foot or toes can be easily noted. After cleaning with an apriceptic solution, local anesthetic is infiltrated subcutaneously at the determined needle insertion site. The fingers of the palpating hand should be firmly pressed on the gluteus muscle to decrease the skin nerve distance. The palpating hand should not be moved during block placement. Even small movements of the palpating hand can substantially change the position of the needle insertion site because the skin and soft tissues in the gluteal region are highly mobile. The needle is introduced at an angle perpendicular to the spherical skin plane. The nerve stimulator should be initially set to deliver 1 to 1.5 mA current to allow detection of twitches of the gluteal muscles and stimulation of the sciatic nerve. As the needle is advanced, the first twitches observed are from the gluteal muscles. These twitches merely indicate that the needle position is still too shallow. The goal is to achieve visible or palpable twitches of the hamstrings or the calf muscles, the foot or toes at 0.3 to 0.5 mA current. 
Twitches of the hamstrings are equally acceptable because this approach blocks the nerve proximal to the separation of the neuronal branches to the hamstrings muscle. Once the gluteal twitches disappear, brisk response of the sciatic nerve to stimulation is observed. Either hamstrings, the calf, the foot, or the toe twitches. After the initial stimulation of the sciatic nerve is obtained, the stimulating current is gradually decreased until twitches are still seen or felt at 0.3 to 0.5 milliampere current. This typically occurs at a depth of 5 to 8 centimeter. After negative aspiration for blood, 15 to 25 ml of local anesthetic is injected. Any resistance to the injection of LA should prompt needle withdrawal by 1 mm. The injection is then re-attempted. Persistent resistance to injections should prompt complete needle withdrawal and ensuring needle patency before reintroduction.